What's up, guys? Eloy Grinder here, and uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is uh, a new series I'm starting. This is episode one. Uh, a lot of a lot of talk on on social media about like um, what's going to happen to the players. How are players going to, you know, like come to grips with like the new norm as far as like you know playing in live poker? But it seems like not a whole lot of people are talking about the people who are dealing the cards or running the poker rooms. So I have today a very special guest. I'm glad that he uh, accepted my invitation to be on the channel. Um, he's, we're we're going to talk about uh, his field. Uh, he's a Las Vegas poker dealer. He's been doing it for uh, around 15 years, right? right 15, 15 years, years, yes. All right. So uh, without further ado, uh, please give it up for Ronnie Bizzle. Oh, there you go. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good, good, man. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Surviving, man. Surviving this uh, this pandemic. That's right? what we're all doing. Just trying to survive. Just give us like a quick background uh, for the people who who may not know who you are. All right, um, I'm Ronnie Bizzle. Um, I'm a poker dealer here in Vegas for a uh, kind of a medium small poker room. Uh, I've been dealing that that poker room for 15 years. It's only it's been a fun ride, and I uh, really enjoy I really enjoy it. It's something that you you wish w would continue, right? You're not you're not sure. done dealing. Or you're <laughs> not, you're not ready to hang up. You know, not just yet, not just yet. Are you like are you one of like the more senior um, poker dealers in uh, at, at your uh, poker room? Yes, I am. Um, I got hired in 2005. Um, the poker room that I work at open eight months before I got hired. So I'm Oh, okay. So you're you're OG. I'm OG. Very, yeah, very you're OG. OG. <laughs> I'm like the furniture. You've been documenting uh what's been going on with you. Yeah, well lately um I've been uh, um I know I, I I watch a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of stuff on the internet about, you know, how the poker poker players are being affected by it. You know, then I could, there's no live poker anywhere. But um there's not there's nothing really talking about people behind the scenes like poker dealers poker managers anything anybody who works in the poker field so i want to give my perspective of how it's like um behind the box of uh the employees and how, how hard it is right now for us and to adjust to what it is what it is right now and and knowing that the uncertainty is real that there's we don't know when we're gonna come back to work uh we don't we don't know like what's going to happen in the future. I mean, is there going to be poker life? Is live poker going to be gone for, for a long, long time? Are we going to go back to work in three months, six months, nine months? So I just want to give a, um, a background of, you know, my feelings, like the anxiety that I feel, the, just like the, the self doubt, the uncertainty of just what the poker industry is going to look like six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now, and how I'm adjusting as someone, who works in the industry. I see that on Twitter, that there's been a lot of stuff that's been circulating as far as like when the casinos are gonna open and when they're gonna open poker poker rooms. I, I know you can't reveal if you've received such type of documentation from your employer. The poker room that I work at, our poker manager has like a Facebook page and he's been, you know, giving us um, uh, updates. Um, uh, when we're going to go back, if we're going to go back, what's going to happen. But right now, it's there's no really set date of when they're going to open the casinos, let alone a poker room. Mm -hmm. So, and there's, I've noticed, like, when I talk to my fellow dealers, there's been a lot of anxiety as far as, like, I mean, when we first got the news that we were going to close on the poker room, we we just thought, okay, we'll be gone for, like, a month, maybe two. But now that we're approaching... Um, two full months of being furloughed and laid off or whatever, um, you can tell the anxiety is getting a little more tense. Like just not so much like when it's going to open, but just the uncertainty of like just mm -hmm. the industry in general. Some of you guys were like expecting not to work for a month. Was there any type of like, yeah, I'm good. Like I, I got enough in the bank, you know, that kind of stuff. Like was there talk like that or was there like, oh shit, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I live paycheck to paycheck, you know, what was, 
stuff like that going on? Well, in the um, the meeting that we had the last day before they closed on the poker rooms, um, some of the dealers you can tell by their faces that this is a tough. I mean, there are a lot of them, not just in my poker room, but just in, in poker deals in general. They, a lot of them live paycheck to paycheck, um, so you could just tell like the uncertainty of like how long I'm going to be furloughed, how long I'm going to be gone is. You can just tell. I mean, some people save, save their money. And I know we have a couple of people, a couple of dealers that I work with who are retired, and they just do this just to kill time. Mm-hmm. So they're not really worried too much about. It. They're more more worried about their benefits more than anything else. But you know, there's there's a a group of dealers that you can tell that this is going to be tough for them, and and you just tell that they're like, I, I don't know what's what's going to happen. So yeah. Yeah, it's 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 obviously very tough, especially like not knowing. I bet you read the um, the memo put out by Nevada Gaming as far as like how many players can be at a table at one time. And when I saw that poker, are they are they are they doing fifty percent capacity also, or is well, it just they, four, they, four per they, table? I guess when they reopen the the casinos, I guess they're gonna start with fifty percent capacity. So I'm not sure how that's gonna be tracked, but. Yeah. If you think about it, you've got fifty percent of the people in there. I don't know what the percentage of those are going to be poker players. And then after the fact that the Nevada Gaming wants uh, poker rooms have a maximum of four players. Now you and I play poker. You know poker players. Mm-hmm. It's hard for them to, to play seven handed, let alone four handed. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I think even if they open it, um, there's going to be an issue of getting people in the poker room to play poker. Mm-hmm. especially four-handed yeah um i don't think it'd be a problem for like high limit because you know high limit players tend to play short-handed that's their specialty yeah. but when you get to the low limits like the um, the, the games that i deal in mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to, to get nine or four people to play four-handed mm-hmm. and then with rake, that rake is it, a big rake is a big factor in that too right? it's huge it is huge rake is rake when i became a dealer when I first started my job, they said the most important thing a dealer has to do is make sure you get that rate correct. Mm-hmm. Make sure you rake it right. But when you're now, and it's four-handed, um, there's not going to be any too, too many big pots. So there's not going to be enough rake for the casino to justify it um, being open uh, for a long time. Because th- this is my, my feeling is that if they open the poker room four-handed, and let's say a deal, let's say a month in, there's, it's four-handed. Um, there's, you know how it is in Vegas. There's a lot of nets, a lot of chop pots. So there's no rate going in, which because the pots are small. So mm. the, the casino's not making any money. And the dealers aren't making money because you're not getting tip because the pots are so small. Mm-hmm. Um, and tip is very, very important for, for a poker dealer. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's mm. how we make our living. You know, we get paid minimum. A lot of them can pay minimum wage plus tips. All that's going to be hard because let's say oh, like I said, open for a month and then the numbers go in. And so the, the people in the big, big wig offices are going to look at the number and go, hey, hey, wait a minute now. Poker's not making any money here. So let's just get rid of other poker rooms and put some slot machines in there. Knowing yeah. that. Yeah, I heard you know, that poker, too. Poker's not really a big money maker to begin with. It's more an um, amenity for like a high roller who brings their like um, friends while they're playing slots, their buddy can play poker. That's yeah. pretty much what poker is. Yeah. So it's kind of a, um, um, it's a bad like circle mm-hmm. as far as like, you know, no rake, no tips, mm-hmm. no money being made. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we got, we got all this space. Let's get rid of it. So yeah, that's yeah. why yeah, mm-hmm. I'm afraid to open the poker room like so soon with four handed. Yeah. Like oh. it, 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 it almost makes you want to say, don't even open, bro. Cause then like, I, I might just lose my job entirely. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I've been thinking. That's a lot of the poker deals that work has been talking about is just, you know, it's hard, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to make money. Yeah. You know, it's hard to just by your time being there. If you're not making any money for the house or for yourself. There was like a picture circulating of a table with like plexiglass around it, right? I actually talked about this in my morning live stream mm-hmm. um, every day at 6 a.m. <laughs> Had to plug it, right? So, um, yeah, so we, we talked about it a little, a little bit and I'm like, 
so but it looks like it's made for like a full table where like every player can sit and be you know kind of like talking to their brother in prison type scenario right yeah so like it doesn't seem like okay well the state is saying four but then like this setup looks like it's made for like a full ring game right Mm -hmm. and and i'm like this is horrible (laughs) it's like this is, is this is the best solution that we can come up with right and you know and and like i said you know at the beginning of this interview is like not too many people talk about the people like like you said behind the box on the other side like no one's offering solutions to okay how do you protect the dealers because like you, we could have all the plexiglass right but we we know we, everybody knows those chips are dirty that yep. felt is dirty like every time i go to the bathroom there's like there's like black shit on my nails <laughs> i gotta wash my hands before before i use the bathroom right so i mean like what are they gonna do like are they gonna are they gonna clean the chips the cards like in between hands, right? Like, are we gonna see like 10 hands every half hour instead of like 20, right? So it's like, the the, the slower the game, the, the less money the casino makes, right? So- yeah, the, le- the less hands you make, the yeah. less money is gonna get raked. Yeah, exactly, so, right? And- yeah, because, you know, even if they protect all the players, you know, there's still um, all these dirty chips coming from four different players. So it's four different, you know, people putting their chips in and I'm touching, I'm touching all these chips and the cars mm-hmm. and I'm pushing the pots and mm-hmm. that's like four different people that could have germs and stuff. And yeah. I mean, they could, they could, they could even like not have symptoms and they could just pass it along to you. You go home, you, you, you pass it to your wife and, and, and your kids. I was, I said on my live stream, I was like, what are dealers going to do? Are they going to like, are they going to try to riffle the cards with gloves on? So, I mean, like, you know, I can understand maybe dealers wearing masks. I mean, that's easy. Right, but like the physical contact of stuff that you're touching and they're touching, it's mm. it kind of makes it like nah, like I don't I don't want to do this because like is it is it worth risking your life? Right. And I don't think like like you said it's going to be worth it because they're they're like you said there there's added things you have to do to keep the players and the dealers safe. Like you said, washing hands or washing the chips between between um between like downs or different hands or whatever. So. It's going, to, it's going to say slow the game down, which means, you know, no rake. What makes poker so great is the social aspect of the game. And yeah. when you have these plexiglasses around the tables, you lose that element of social, being social with each player. Because you're sitting next to a guy, you, you talk to him, there's like the glass. And like you said, it feels like you talk to some guy in prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But hey, but like at least like the one positive thing about the plexiglass is when a player is mad at you for, for dealing him, a you know, like a bad river, when he tries to throw the cards at you, it'll just bounce off the plexiglass. Yeah, right right? <laughs> <laughs> this whole, uh, this whole, like coronavirus, this pandemic, this lockdown, it's really changed what people would consider like normal now, like, especially in Vegas, because we're we're such a touristy town yep. that um, you know we're unlike a lot of these other cities. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be a while before we get back to the way it was before. Because like you said, people, because we're, so, we're such a touristy town that we get people from all over the world. And the fact that it's embedded in our minds right now that this coronavirus is like the worst thing that ever happened, that people are going to have or be hesitant to travel now. So, they're gonna, they're, so, so people are going to be afraid to come to Vegas to travel because, you know, they're afraid they're going to get the virus because there's, because because you're invading on the strip, whatever. It's just so many people, just so many ways that people interact that you could spread the virus. And until we get like a vaccine or something that will cure this, this um, the virus, yeah. it's, it's Vegas is going to struggle for a while. Yeah. And, um, it's not, I mean, the way, what, way it was literally like two months ago, it's going to be, it's not going to be like that for a while, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a very optimistic person. But when sometimes you think about it, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very scary to think of how long this is going to last for mm-hmm. us in Vegas. Yeah. And it's going to, like I said, affect the, the employees like myself. And because, you know, not just dealers, but like other people who work in the hospitality industry. I mean, we're all affected by it. Yeah. I mean, the majority of this town is works hospitality. So it's, it's you know, I mean, people think it's going to happen within like three months, four months. It's, I, you know, the way the perception is right now, it's, 
it's going to be a while before we're back to being the normal vibrant Las Vegas the way it was yeah. before. Um, I got all my information on on social media, so <laughs> you know <laughs> I can't I can't say this is all accurate, right? But like um, I saw, I think it was like on Twitter. I I think it was mostly on Twitter that like they're saying that oh some of these poker rooms might not even open back up at all. Right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. That, so, that, like, right. let's say, like, there, there's like thirty some odd poker rooms in Vegas. Maybe like only twenty will come back, even at like a limited capacity. So there's like five or ten that just won't open back up at all. How difficult will it be to try and get in with some of these other rooms? Was it would, very, would it be very hard? Yeah, it's very very hard because poker, like poker, it's hard. It's hard to get a dealing job, especially in Las Vegas. Because I know, like, in our poker my work at, they had this audition about a year ago, and there was only, like, 10 spots. And we had literally had, like, 200 people show up for this audition. Wow. So now... So they only had to pick 10 out of 200. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it was, yeah, me and another poker room were connected. So 10, 10, about 20. They're going to... I think this is a good reason for a lot of the big corporations to close out a poker room, given the excuse of well the coronavirus did this but in, in actuality it's, it's well they're not making any money for the for the room anyway let's just get rid of them and we can put a couple slot machines in there so now that the poker rooms are going to be shrinking to i don't know maybe well, i don't know how many 20 or 30 in vegas mm -hmm. if they get rid of the, the majority of this they, they get rid of maybe half of them so so maybe a, the big poker rooms and then a couple of the smaller rooms will survive um, there's going to be less dealing jobs for people to work. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be. So difficult. you think like it's, it's like the perfect reason for, for some of these, Absolutely. for perfect some of these casinos to just be like, Hey, you know what? We're not making any money. We're just going to make room for some slots. And then this right. is the, like I said, this is the perfect, the perfect reason for them to, you know, yeah, get they've rid been of waiting. Like, it's like, oh. they've been waiting for something like this to happen for them. To like, All right, we can finally get rid of this fucking, you know, this fucking Cause shit. Like, Cause here. I know that. Um, I think um, to be a, a lot of the poker rooms are open because uh, I could be wrong here, but I think to, in order to be a, like a five, I think it's called a five diamond hotel. The one of the qualifications you have to have a poker room. Oh, so people keep the okay. poker rooms. Oh, because like you want to be able to offer every amenity yeah. possible, right? Okay. So in order to get like a five diamond status, um, you have to have a poker room. That's one of the qualifications. So I think a lot of the poker rooms, like I said, I could be wrong. But I think that's the reason why a lot of these poker rooms are still open, so they can maintain their, uh, their five-star status. I see. Oh, that's interesting. Like you know, I I never even thought of that. So they're so it's kind of like they're forced to have it. Right? Yeah, forced to have it. Yeah, I'm assuming but, like like we, like, like, about, like we talked about before. I mean, like I said, this is this now this is the reason for the justify. Well, you know, we're not getting business. We got a you know a downsize, mm -hmm. and what what better way to downsize is a department that doesn't really make money for the house anyways and get yeah. rid of it. So, All right. So typically, like, um, I mean, from your experience, typically, like, how much staff does one poker room retain? Like, obviously, you've got your manager who's like the top guy, and he's okay. got he's got like some second tier level guys, right? And then like, I guess like floor people and and a bunch of dealers, cage people. So I like for typically, um, how 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 many people are actually involved in like running, maintaining a poker room? Like the whole well, stuff. I, I'll speak for the poker room that I work at. Uh, we have 14 tables in our room. Um, I would say we have uh, three poker room man, poker room supervisors for each shift. Uh, we have some cashiers. I think there's like four of them. And then we have um, the dealers, which is about, um, I want to say 50 maybe, 40 to 50. Okay. And, and But that's not all full-time, right? That's kind of like split. No, it's like I, I would say – Half of it is full time. Okay, and and you're and you're full time, right? You're you yeah, full time. Yes. Okay, okay. Wow, that's uh, fifty plus. So maybe like around sixty people, sixty yeah. to seven. That's a lot. That's a lot of people are out of work right now. Yeah, and imagine and that's, and, that's a, and like you said about closing the room. It's a lot of people to keep paying if yeah. they're not dealing. Yeah, um, to pay like their benefits, whatever. Uh, so, so you think like the managers and a the supervisor they're getting paid right now, or do you think like because the program's not there. I think, I mean, I'm not for sure, but I think they're probably um, getting unemployment like, like the rest of us. Uh, when, when I got furloughed, we got paid for uh, two weeks plus tips, mm -hmm. the average we were made. And then the company I work for gave us an option of do you want to, because what was going to happen if you um, uh, want to uh, use, your, you can use your PTO, you exhaust your PTO, 
Mm-hmm. And then you then you then go on unemployment. But they gave us an option to if you want just opt out of your PTO and just okay. use employment. You can't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't like fight it. Okay. So I got paid for the first two weeks. Then I um, opted out of the PTO, and now I'm just take. I'm getting unemployment like everybody else. It's not a full solution, but uh, no. it's it's a short term solution. I mean, yeah. it's good now, but you know, I'm thinking I'm thinking more into the future, like a year yeah. two years from now is how poker is going to be then. And, you know, it's just, is this still like a, a job that I should have? Uh, let's move on to something else like the world series, right? So world series actually took their time in postponing the mm-hmm. event, uh, but they didn't cancel it. They just postponed it with like, I, I mean, I'm hearing that. Uh, I heard they're talking November. They're talking, they're talking November. November. Okay. So have you, have you ever dealt the series? I have never dealt the series. <laughs> wow, so why 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 never? Uh, because I really didn't really have to. I mean, it, it's for the company I work for. They actually own the World Series, so it's always a, a volunteer um, to work the World Series of Poker. And I just I chose not to because um, you know I, I have my other I have other things going on in my life, or another business. Yeah. So it kind of takes some more of my time, and you know, honestly, I, I really didn't need it. So yeah, okay. I've heard some horror stories about dealing it, so I, I didn't want to deal with all that. So what do you, what do you think about, like, um, World Series? Because obviously World Series is a big event. Thousands of people crammed at the Rio Convention Center with tourists and, you know, walking the hallways, that kind of stuff, right? And people congregating everywhere. It's just, it's just a breeding ground of, like, disease and shit. Are they going to follow the four per table? Because that's not going to work for the World Series. Absolutely. It's not. It's not going to work. So I mean, are they going to do the plexiglass? The plexiglass yeah. is not going to work for TV, you know, because world the World Series is on TV. Like I don't know. I don't know if they have a solution, or I don't know. Like okay, set a date, but what are you guys going to do? Right. That's what I think. They're they they don't want to cancel it, like because they're they're trying to be optimistic about having the World Series of Poker, but you know, with the, the like you said, the nature of the event where all these people are cognizant from all over the world, bringing all their you know their their diseases or whatever. That it's, it's going to be tough to justify running it, yeah. even in November if there's no like vaccine. And I've heard poker other po- like poker players say they're not even going to play. No, I'm not. <laughs> World Series, no, no matter unless what. they can guarantee me 100 percent at 100 percent that I'm not going to get sick. Absolutely, even I'm, dealers I'm not I know deal it. I'm not going to. They don't want to deal. They don't want to deal. This the, the risk versus reward is not good. Uh, as a dealer, what was like your best experience? What I like about poker is you get nine different personalities sitting at a table. Every day is different. You get nine stories of why they're there. You know, some are professional, some are tourists, some are first time they were, they, they were played. But my favorite type of story is um, when, some, when somebody you like, you deal to, and then they come back maybe a year or later and they come right to you because I remember you dealt me this hand where I won this huge pot. And you, you forget the, the person who he's like, oh, okay, you know, you're trying to like act like you know them, but they know you. So you're like part of their story, mm-hmm. of their, like the Las Vegas story. Like I, I remember I dealt to this um, um, young lady. Um, this is when we had, we had this um, jackpot, was like a high hand for Royal Flushes. And I, it was like, it was certain suits were a certain amount they would give you. I remember this one lady, I dealt her a royal flush, and the, she won like $4,000 in the royal, right? It was 4000 okay. bucks. And anyways, uh, she, uh, uh, after all that, she tipped me and everything. I went to the next table. And then she came back the next day. She, I guess she was going back home. And she came to me and gave me a big hug and says, I want to thank you so much because you got me out of my, you got me out of my, losses <laughs> <laughs> you, you, i was losing so much you dumb as well now i'm back to even and stories like that that makes you yeah. feel good because you know whenever they tell you like when you when you when they go back home and they tell you about a hand that they won or maybe they sucked out or they lost a big pot as a deal you're a part of that story because you're the one that dealt the hand so it kind of yeah. feels good that you're part of somebody's um their triumph or their failure or whatever so <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's the Vegas experience right there, right? You know, like uh, you come here to have a good time and you know, sometimes you go home broke, sometimes, you know, things uh things come 
uh, things turn out better than what you expected or what you were like. But, oh, Joe, but, Joe, but it's, it's always a story, which is yeah, what I love. There's always a story. Uh, Ronnie, it was a great uh, pleasure to have you on the channel. I'm going to give you uh, this time right now to kind of like self-promote yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, first of all. No problem. I really, really appreciate you having me on. Uh, my YouTube channel is Ronnie Bizzle TV. Uh, where I talk about me as life as a poker dealer. I talk about my life as an eBayer. I talk about playing poker, just my life in general. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's Ronnie Bizzle TV. And you can check me on Instagram, uh, Ronnie Bizzle TV. I'm also on Twitter, uh, Balt999. So check me out there. Yeah. So, like, you know, if there was anything that we did, we did not discuss here, you guys can go over to this channel and check him out there. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, thanks again, Ronnie, for being here. And um, to everybody out there, thank you for watching. Uh, like always, if you haven't already done so, please hit that sub button. Let's get us to a thousand subs, right? That's the goal for the end of the year. Uh, but more importantly, hit me up in the comments. Let me know, let Ronnie know what you guys think, right? Share some of your stories. If you are a poker dealer, maybe not in Vegas, but maybe some other state, share us your story. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, a like would be great. Dislike if you didn't like the video, but you know, like, like would be better. Uh, I guess we're out. Peace. Peace. God bless.